from school today because I'm not feeling well and um, I thought maybe I could do a video so my my granny um, she wrote a book called Kathy finds her home and um, it says at the frontier dearest Hannah special memories I have written for you to enjoy and remember all our love Nana and Papa um, so me and uh, me and my brother we call our granny and grandpa Nana and Papa because um, yeah I don't know maybe my brother started calling them that and then it says over here this book is for, for our six wonderful grandchildren Daniel, Joshua, Max, Hannah and Matthew and Hardy so there it is and it's about a, a story about my granny and grandpa's dog. Her name was Kathy, and she was a Kelpie sheep dog. And um, she um, was actually um, she's a rescue dog because she was uh, she was in the middle of the road, and she um, um, had her puppies. And then the um, animal welfare um, came, and they picked um, her up and her puppies up and they went to the animal welfare but then all her puppies got taken but she was she was um, very thin because she had been out on the roads for so long so she um, no one wanted to take her but then my granny and grandpa came along and they wanted to take her okay so I'm gonna start reading you the story now I'm a copy sheep dog. Dogs like me love to run very fast and make sure that each, that the sheepy the sheep stay together on a farm. But when the and the animal welfare truck stopped next to me on a deserted road, I was terribly hungry and very tired. My puppies were meant to be born soon, and I did not have enough the enough strength to run away. The people at the animal welfare place of safety were very kind and gave me a blanket, some food, and a place to rest and feel my and feed my puppies. They also found homes for all my puppies, but not for me because I was so thin and did not look good at all. The animal welfare people didn't decided to keep me, and I became their mascot and their leader of all the other dogs that were staying there. I was safe and contented. One day a man and a woman came looking for a dog at the animal welfare place of safety. Later on, I learned that their names were Mops and Pops. Oh, so by the way, my dad and my aunt used to call them Mops and Pops. When they first decided to take me home, they loaded me into their truck and with a blanket. My, I was so shocked and scared that I shivered and shook the whole day. It was then that I remembered how long before that day I had stayed a, as a young dog with people who had beat me. So when I arrived at my new home, I shrank away hoping Mops and Pops would not beat me too. Slowly but surely, however, I found out that they never shouted at me. Sometimes I saw people walking across the gate, but I was too scared to bark. One day, Pop said to Muffs, When will this dog learn to bark at strangers? Muffs replied, Soon, soon, when she feels more confident. Then Muffs came closer to me and said, said come on Kathy bark woof woof but no sound came from the throat then many days later I managed a small woof sound mops rushed to pat me and encouraged me to bark more both mops and pops looked very happy and relieved later on I came to understand that my barking helped them to know when people were passing by the view from the patio of Mops and Pops' house is really lovely. During the day, I love to sit there and look at the giant ocean while keeping an ear out for passing people and motor cars. We also have a beautiful view of the valley 
at the bottom of our valley lies a forest of trees which grows naturally along the river. On the other side of the river, a path curves up the hill to a plantation that was pups planted many years ago. There were not many buildings in the distance because we lived on a small farm called Hillendale. Pups and mops often used to sit in the patio with me, having a, their cup of tea. These were good times when we enjoyed the sunshine. When the weather was hot, we also sat in the shade of a very big tree called the yellowwood, which they had planted 25 years ago. Birds loved to nest in the, the tree and bath in the in the bird bath, which stood next to it. Sometimes pups and mops patted me and stroked me on my back. They gave me a good food and spoke kindly to me and loved me to me. I felt special and loved for the first time, and life was good. Every afternoon about four o'clock, I became very excited because it was the time that we would take a walk with Mops and Pops and their neighbors. The neighbors' dogs were called Ben and Simba and Daisy. And they became my best friends. We enjoyed chasing each other around and having fun. We often walked a path near the rocks, overlooking a big ocean below us. Some days, the view from the wall was calm, with blue skies and blue seas, but not on the other days, the wind blew fiercely and the sea was wild with loud waves crashing onto the rocks below. I always smelt out any new smells and also left my scent to tell other dogs that I had been there. The path along the cliff edge had been had special flowers growing next to it called proteins and bitter bushes with yellow flowers. These walks were very special treats and we all loved being there together. One day our neighbour said, look how Kathy has changed. She is such a beautiful dog now. And then Mops realised love has changed her. She is now thick ridge of fur on her back and a happy smile on her face. Love changes everything. Pops and Pops had three grown up children who had already left the farm. Their two daughters Wendy and Lanelle and their son Brenda. They soon grew to love me too. In the winter, I would lie next to a roaring fire and the younger ones would lie on the floor with me, with their head on the, my body or sit on the carpet next to me. This lovely, cosy feeling reminded me of how I felt when my puppies had first lain next to me. Sometimes, Wendy and Lanelle and Brendan would visit the farm on holidays such as Christmas or Easter or birthdays. I would always lie on my special soft mat and listen to the chatting and laughing around the dining room table. It was a good feeling to be part of this family and I felt like one of them. Having a bath was definitely my worst experience. Sometimes I noticed pop mops getting the bucket and gloves ready for some tea tree oil shampoo. And I would try and disappear more often, though pops would hold my lead while mops washed me. Afterwards I ran around, around the garden to shake my fur dry. Not only did I feel good and clean, but the fleas also no longer worried me as so much anymore. Pops also put some liquid on my neck and to keep my, the fleas and ticks away and to prevent me from getting sick from their bites.
Pops and I spent lots of time in the veggie garden. He had built 12 veggie beds, each size of a big door. In each of them, he had put some good soil mixed with compost. compost. The birds were very fond of the beans, so my job was to chase them and stop them from getting under the shade cl cloths. It was always a happy time when my pops picked the beans and baby marrows, the garlic, the onions, and presented them so proudly to Mops. Then Mops would sit next to me on the patio in the shade and prepare the vegetables for supper or for bottling as curried beans or picked onions. I always loved sitting next to them chatting about their future plans. Pups always used us to spend a lot of time clearing the land of alien bushes or cutting the, uh, back the shrubs and trees that have uh, had overgrown their place or would spoil their view. They also cleared the path for us to walk along the river th through a nat natural forest in the valley. This was very hard work, but the paths were enjoyed by the neighbors too. Pops also built wooden bridges so that we could cross over the fast flowing river when the rains came. Our neighbors often came to take an afternoon walk down the valley through the forest, over the, the river, up the hill to the pine plantation. My doggy friends Ben and Simba and Daisy loved to chase each other, running freely through the pines. Oh, such special times they were. When Pops needed to tidy up and take the cut branches down to bury the big compost heap, I was allowed to sit on the front seat next to him inside the truck. I felt very important then, especially when Mops called me Queen Catherine. When family or friends visited, we usually had a bride. Pops used to pick up small twigs and branches and start a really good fire outside. Once the fire had died down to the hot coals, they would lay the meat on the iron grid and I was terribly tempted by the sweet smell of grilled sausage. Then I would wait patiently next to Pops because I knew that I was being given the taste of that sausage as a treat. And Brendan Butte soon learned how to take over the fire duty, while Wendy and Linnell helped Pops making studies and preparing for the dinner table. Later, there would be lots of chatting and laughing again while they all enjoyed a meal in the and then we would relax once more sitting be before the fireplace in the lounge. One day a big furniture van came over and stopped outside our gate. Our furniture was carried out and after some time different furniture was carried in. Soon I realized that times were changing. Pops and Mops had sold the farm to Brandon and Wendy and they were moving to a house in town. Mops and Pops still came over to visit their grandchildren and to take me for walks. Okay guys, so I was sick um, the other day so I was feeling quite tired and I wasn't feeling well. So that's why I was falling, uh, I was a bit falling asleep and um, yeah, uh, at the end. So now I'm going to finish the story for you now because I was falling asleep then. Okay. <coughs> Best of all, as far as I was concerned, 
The farm was still owned by the family. Brendan's young family brought a new puppy with them to grow up on the farm and I loved showing the little Murphy the ropes. I taught him when to bark and when to keep quiet and let him sleep against my tummy on lazy days. As I lie with the sun at my back to warm my aging bones, I remembered all the happy times we had and realized that love changed me all right. Love changes everything. Wow, and what a great story. So, um, I have to go now, but good story. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that is my brother Max, and that is Kat. Oh, I want to see. Cool. He's so young. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, can you go go to www.anamaris.co.za to download the um, Kathy finds a home. Thanks, bye.